So thank you for uh, all for making here. Uh, we get a bit of mix up with uh, uh, registration and uh, or it got a bit delayed. So we'll both have to make up some time and uh, I guess a bit get a bit shorter breaks. But anyway, thank you for uh, being with us here. So what I'm going to talk about is called MySQL ecosystem. And I especially uh, choose the ecosystem instead of more kind of common MySQL community keyword because I think community has kind of uh, almost like negative connotation. Community is people who don't pay, right? What is called MySQL community server or InfoBright community edition. This is edition for people who want to do it well, frankly cheap, right? Without uh, paying for software and I hope we have a lot of great people who just use software, but there are also great people who are using software commercially and understand the value of paying for software, even if that is an open source software. And I think uh, really what the ecosystem is where both open source and commercial interests are joined and a lot of MySQL success really comes uh, from the fact this was a company which was, was able to uh, very successfully build both commercial and open source ecosystem around that. Let me talk a bit about the history. Oh my gosh, you can't see that in the top of the slides, but anyway, I'll read that for you. If you look at the MySQL ecosystem and community, I think this is one of those projects which got a lot of shocks over the last five years, right? We all wake up one day to find the Oracle acquired in NDB, and even though uh, in MySQL played like MySQL in NDB is just yet another storage engine, we knew what in NDB was the storage engine for MySQL world and uh, uh, what Oracle having in a DB, well, that was a big deal. Then another bright morning, we wake up to see what Sun now owns MySQL. And that was a big transition because Sun is a giant company, right? And there is going to be a lot of changes for MySQL. And finally, yet another day, uh, we heard that uh, Oracle acquire Sun and MySQL fit. And I think that was a very uh, interesting change uh, because for a lot of people working in MySQL, we know what uh, MySQL was there actually to, to get Oracle, right, and remove it from Pedestal. So that was a big event, big event for uh, a lot of Oracle employees, uh, a lot of MySQL employees. Well, I think a good thing is what hopefully this line of, uh, this kind of period of shocks is gone. Uh, I'm not sure anybody is going to buy Oracle anytime soon. But uh, <laughs> that looks unlikely to me. So what concerns did people have? Well, I think a lot of questions were asked two years ago is, is Oracle going to kill MySQL? That was a lot of people have been speculating about, very concerned about. And I think that at this point, we are all kind of uh, a bit relaxed and understand that is uh, not happening and that we don't have a, a reason to believe Oracle is going to kill MySQL. We see what Oracle has a lot of great MySQL engineers in it and they are uh, building engineering and professional services teams to be uh, larger. Oracle is uh, very successful promoting MySQL and enterprise company and in uh, companies. And uh, you know what? The fact there is a very large and successful database company behind MySQL is uh, very important and helps MySQL a lot into enterprise adoption. So having such an you know big uh, large uh, company back in MySQL has a lot of positive signs to it. Another great uh, impact what we see is what the engineering team, which kind of was working on the side separately from MySQL, is now rejoined the rest of MySQL engineering team. And we can see development in uh, MySQL is, uh, uh, is a lot more joint effort these days. You know, making MySQL to run better with in a DB, not trying to get, you know, 25 different transactional storage engines, right? So in ATB is just one of them. We also see what uh, Oracle is uh, really focusing on uh, the needs of a lot of core MySQL users, which are actually different from enterprise, which is uh, in web, right? Previously we could see in MySQL, uh, 
creating a lot of you know, fancy features like views or stored procedures, but frankly, these are probably not the top features MySQL standard users, like web users need. They need simple operation support, scalability, robustness, and all this kind of stuff. And we actually can see a lot of those things which have been neglected being fixed in MySQL 5, 5 and 5.6, right? Working on multi-thread replication or crash safe uh, slave. These are not fancy features which you can, uh, you know, sell to CIO in a large enterprise company because that is kind of well, very complicated to describe. But that is something we need for MySQL operations. Also, I would say what uh, MySQL 5.5 is probably the uh, most uh, stable initial GA release to date. We have uh, relatively few uh, complaints about MySQL 5.5 uh, uh, stability compared to, uh, to previous MySQL releases, which is also very, uh, very good stuff. Finally, I would mention Oracle uh, have been very successful uh, getting MySQL uh, optimized for Windows. That is where uh, I think MySQL has uh, a lot of potential and uh, it wasn't getting a lot of attention. Now, we also have to understand what Oracle is going to be Oracle and Oracle is going to do what's good for Oracle. And uh, that, is, uh, that is fine. We know Oracle uh, is well known for its ability to uh, make profit from my business, their ability to have a clear vision and uh, clear execution. We may not like all a decision Oracle is going to do about MySQL, but uh, frankly having a uh, partner uh, which, is, which you understand, which is straight and clear, is uh, very good in business, even if you uh, disagree on, uh, on some decisions. And I would mention one important thing about the Oracle is what uh, we have to understand, right? What Oracle, you know, Oracle owns MySQL, right? That's what, uh, you know, Oracle bought with Sun and, you know, MySQL founders, developers, whatever, uh, got their, their payday by choice, in a sense, right? And uh, now Oracle is uh, free to do with MySQL, what uh, they see fit. And that is Oracle gift to us as a community, what they keep developing MySQL as an open source and they keep uh, giving back so many new wonderful features to us. So I would really like to see it positive. Let me talk a bit about some other forks right, uh, of MySQL which have originated in the uh, while. The first one to mention is Drizzle, which started during the Sun Times, a project of reinventing MySQL. It's microkernel architecture. It has uh, significantly refactored, easy to maintain code. A lot of features have been removed and, uh, and re-implemented. It has decided to easy develop, test, and uh, so far it has uh, attracted more than 100 developers contributed to this project. I think uh, Diesel is mostly focused on the new installations, right? Pushing the boundaries of uh, MySQL uh, ecosystem, if I, uh, if I can say, and, and that is uh, very important. I think we'll get relatively few MySQL uh, users migrating to Drizzle, but at the same time, uh, a lot of new developments uh, uh, will be considering this as a potential database. And the good thing here is, well, we finally, after a few years of development, has Drizzle as, uh, as GA. So the Drizzle team, at least, has uh, welcomed you to try and uh, run it in, uh, in production. Another <clears throat> important MySQL fork is uh, MariaDB, which is started by uh, father of, of MySQL and also father of kids, which give uh, names to a bunch of MySQL projects. Dota Mu and Maria and San Max. I, I think just that's a, uh, a little fun fact. And uh, MariaDB uh, is a project which is started on uh, being a replacement for MySQL. So it's a lot uh, uh, easier or let's say possible to run for many applications without changes, unlike Drizzle. And it's also very much focused on making sure there is an easy way to accept community contributions. And this is probably the project 
uh, which is uh, you know on the second uh, before uh, after diesel in amount of community contributions were accepted. They also have uh, pretty much uh, their majority of X MySQL optimizer team working out there, and they are having a lot of great progress done on uh, optimizer, especially for complex queries. And uh, some of the uh, stuff makes queries to run uh, ten times of uh, complex queries to run ten times of faster due to hash join and you know various subqueries optimization and such. The Perconus error. Yeah, well, uh, that is what we do uh, at uh, Percon. And I think this is probably, uh, if you uh, uh, like to call it a fork or uh, not a fork, that's, uh, that's your choice. But we have the uh, least uh, amount of changes. And I think we, we try to really uh, get, uh, be the most compatible with MySQL and focus on performance, scalability, transparency, and ease of use in our changes, what we do. We want to be uh, to preserve as much of user level behavior as possible, right? Uh, in fact, even if we think there is MySQL behavior which we don't really like, we'll still preserve it. Maybe implement an option to change it, but uh, uh, we know what a lot of applications even need, like back to back compatibility with MySQL to re really have uh, a drop and replacement. The, the source of the code in Perconnoisseur is both. Um, uh, is both Percon and third parties. We have uh, uh, accepted or integrated a lot of work done by Google, later Facebook, and, uh, and other parties. But at the same time, we're not actually uh, uh, looking to uh, you know, integrate community contributions just because somebody wants to give it to us. We uh, run it more like invitation-only club. If you think that is a good changes and you think we need them, we will uh, you know, invite people to uh, contribute the changes back to us. So what is community doing in MySQL? I think that is, uh, goes a lot uh, invisible for uh, a lot of users, but uh, MySQL users, but there is still a lot of development which is uh, done by uh, third parties. I think uh, Facebook is obviously uh, number one these, day, uh, these days. But Mark Callaghan, who moved to Facebook uh, from Google, also took a lot of his patch and leadership with him in Facebook produce amazing amount of uh, you know, fun patches around MySQL helping to solve operational problem on large scale, which is pretty cool. But there's also a lot of smaller users producing uh, you know, uh, patches in MySQL to solve their needs and uh, they uh, being uh, penetrating and included in various other MySQL uh, products as well as giving a lot of good ideas to companies maintaining those uh, forks, what do we need? Now, I want to talk a bit about the nature of open source business, right? And how it is different from, let's say, commercial closed source software, mm -hmm. software business. And I think that is very, uh, very important for us. The difference with, uh, with let's say, uh, completely open source business which would be front like per corner, right? We don't have any software to sell you. Like all, everything what there is out there is open source and you can use that without, uh, without paying uh, anything, right? And, but what that still means is uh, if you, uh, you don't have to pay for open source software, but you have to recognize what uh, really uh, open source software is created by developers, and whatever like well-known open source project you take, you will see what uh, a lot of development testing and so it has to be paid for someone, right? That would be large misconception to see what there is, you know, a lot of volunteers out here who just like to spend their days doing, you know, those ridiculous regression test suits and you know hunting for those last ugly bugs, which you know. Take, take a week to, to catch. This is uh, an engineering effort which is, uh, which is largely paid. And I would welcome and encourage you right, to think about how you can support open source projects, what you use, because uh, that, is, uh, that is important for all of us, right? If you want high quality software, 
with features what we are uh, we are missing, then uh, we have to help uh, those projects with uh, you know, finding the same with you know, support, consulting, whatever that is. Now, the mix or the close of software. I have heard from, I mean, I know from Percona side that running purely open source business when you can't actually force people to pay you for any software you use is hard. I know, uh, uh, I know a lot of people, uh, I know a lot of people uh, also uh, believe that is, uh, that, that is impossible. And I also believe that many technologies simply wouldn't be created, right, if it is as open source. Maybe they require it to users, or maybe that just requires so much, uh, you know, uh, it, uh, engineering effort that it's very hard to create. And I believe it's better for us as users, as uh, customers, to have some solutions in MySQL space which are available as commercial solutions than uh, not to have them at all. And, and I think that we are uh, very happy at Percona to help people both uh, with open source solutions as well, uh, help uh, with using closed source solutions if it is, uh, if it is a better choice. And let me uh, go quickly. I'm, I'm trying to kind of jam it a bit so we make up some of the time. We get, uh, if you look at the replication cluster, you can see we have whole bunch of uh, different software. Some of that is closed source and some of that is open source. Backups, again, we get uh, Zimander, right, which is partly open source software, or Percon Extra Backup, which is, uh, which is completely open source. For monitoring and uh, administration, there's a whole bunch of great tools, uh, both open source and closed source, right? Alternative storage engines. Again, there is a, a area which is the, done by mind to like kind of transactional MySum replacement, open source PBXT as well, while there is TokuDB or RethinkDB, which are uh, very interesting uh, closed source uh, technologies with some uh, unique prospects. Analytics, we have both uh, InfoBright and uh, InfinityDB, which have some uh, versions which are uh, open source. If you look at the uh, MySQL full text search, it's actually an interesting one because there is uh, only, uh, there seems to be only open source uh, solutions which take the most market share in this space, right, for, uh, for whatever reason. Let me speak with this one because that is a big topic and get to uh, another important one. Uh, I think in MySQL ecosystem, we have uh, right now very healthy and large, uh, what I would call the uh, professional services ecosystem. If you look at support, consulting, training, remote DBA, custom development, there are lots and lots of people to help you, right? There is uh, obviously Percona, Monty Program, MV, SkySQL, uh, PPN, um, a lot of companies. And I should mention also effective uh, SkySQL, this is your kind of or Aka Ronald Bradford, which is your resident New York MySQL expert. Are you here, Ronald? Okay, can you stand up? Just come on. People should know Ronald. So he is MySQL expert here in New York. Sure. So, uh, and I want also to talk a bit in a few words about the Pircon Alive and what is our goal with this uh, conference or uh, as you know by now, a series of conferences. We really want to uh, support the ecosystems and build a synergy between open source and closed source uh, companies. Uh, we want to uh, uh, clearly state this is, uh, we don't see this as like an open source conference. And what is important here, we believe what the Close, we don't want closed source vendors to feel themselves as second class citizens, right? Because we think it is very important what MySQL progresses both in the closed source and open source environments. We want to educate people with, uh, f about the full power of MySQL and what you can achieve with both the open source and clo closed source solutions. And as you know, uh, probably seen the slides before we are running Percona Live. 
uh, in London next time, and that's coming next October. So we welcome uh, you both to attend if you like, spray vault, tell your friends, sponsor event, whatever. That's a bit cool. And let me uh, go over the sponsors uh, quickly again. They're just trying to make up, uh, make up some time here and uh, invite uh, one of them to speak after me. Right. Come on, Paul. 